Residents are unable to occupy the Verve Apartments in Newcastle. Let's have a look. Hello everyone, Florian Heiser here. Welcome to another episode of Heiser Says. I decided to take a break from Saturday afternoon yard work. I've got my stein of coffee and I'm going to read an article that a few people shared with me. And this is about an apartment building in Newcastle, the Verve Apartments or Verve Residences in Newcastle West. Let's just jump here to, to give people who aren't familiar with Newcastle, and I haven't been there for a long time. It's a lovely town on the coast of New South Wales, you know, famous for its port and a lot of the um, what coal and steel industry it used to have there. So we've got Sydney down here. And here's Newcastle. And I'd hazard, I guess, some people even uh, might, you know, commute or at least catch the train from Newcastle to Sydney every day. Thumbs up if you do. I'm sure property would be cheaper in Newcastle. I remember I went there for a university uh, field trip. We did a project um, looking at the museum in Newcastle. And we all just flew down there. And the promenade was lovely. And the city's great. If we have a look here, we zoom in. This is the site of the two biggest towers in Newcastle, the two newest and biggest towers, the Verve project. And what we'll do is we'll just zoom here and you can see, you know, construction well underway at the beginning. And it's hit the news. These cranes were in the skyline for Newcastle for about two years, apparently. So what we'll do is we'll jump back to this article and we'll have a look. So damage from a water leak on the ninth floor of a new Newcastle West apartment building will prevent people from moving in to the lower floors next week as planned. So what? Uh, how is this going to affect the people in there and what rectification works has to be done? We'll have a talk about that. The Verve residences, two identical towers that have been constructed on King Street over the past two years, have had the final touches added in recent weeks in preparation for the first residents to move in. However, a tested pressure pipe burst on Sunday and sent water running through the southern tower, causing damage to floors below. A water pipe burst on the ninth level in the common area, and it did do some flooding, Verve, development, uh, Verve developer uh, Warwick Miller said. It flooded the common area, and unfortunately the elevators. It had a minor effect on some apartments. It will set back people moving in, but it will, it, it'll only has an effect on the lower parts of the South Tower. There will be people starting to move into the building next week. So people can occupy the building. Now, what would what should you do if you're one of the people that have moved into this building? And what, what are the implications of it? Because this, this is not such a surprising issue. These type of things happen. And it's actually better. It's better that it's happened now than happened some down, sometime down the track. Because they're just about to a practical completion, I'd assume, because people are moving in. And the fact that this issue was detected now is much better than one year or two years later after the defects liability period is up. And then you've got all these other issues of getting it rectified. So it's a good thing. It's a good thing that it happens now. And it's a good thing that it can be rectified now because hopefully the team is still on the side. He's still got you know, his contractor active. They're still finishing up the building. So it shouldn't be as hard to rectify the issue. Now... Say the building's already practically complete, and that's where it's deemed to be practically finished, and the defects liability period starts from that, that point on. If I were bu was buying, or if I was told, you know, I couldn't move into one of these apartments, I'd like to get documented what has had to be rectified due to this issue. So that there's, you know, been water damage to some of the apartments, there's been water damage and flooding to the lift and other elements. Now, say, just for argument's sake, it takes them a couple of weeks to rectify that damage, hopefully fast enough. You know, they need to redo some plaster, maybe replace some wiring, fix, you know, some carpet that may have been damaged. Maybe there's some issues with the lift that they need to repair a few things. What you would want to get, what you'd want to get would be documents showing what was rectified, marked up as built drawings, because when the building's finished, the contractor and they'll probably hire all the subcontractors and you know even the designers to prepare as constructed drawings. And these are a record of what was actually built. Because you've got your construction drawings. That's the drawings that we all do to get stamped. You can build this. But then things happen during construction. Because remember, guys, these are one-off works of art. These are one-off unique projects created in a unique situation. So things will happen. Things will occur. So even if all they did 
was give you a printout of the drawings and marked up with a with a highlighter going, you know, all this plaster was replaced, this carpet was replaced, this, 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 this. You'd want to make sure that if they did any, any significant work, particularly to the elevator, particularly to the elevator, that uh, the defects liability period for that rectification work, that portion was extended by either two weeks or maybe it took a month or another, a bit longer. The, the defects liability period was extended for that portion of works. Now that may be too much of a hassle. So, you know, you'd say, well, I extend the whole period for the whole building for that extra month. That's kind of what you want if you're an occupier. But it you know, the developer's interest as well is to kind of minimize that. So it depends on how it's procured, how close the developer is to the builder. If it's, you know, if he's the builder and the developer are the same person, it's probably in his best interests if he's got a reputation to maintain, to, you know, take care of the occupants, particularly with what's coming out in the media now. Now's the opportunity for, you know, builders to get a lot of goodwill by just acting decent because there's a lot of shonky stuff coming out. More and more people are starting to send things to me. And I thank you very much for it. Uh, it'll help helps add content or helps feed me content to produce for the channel. So that that's kind of my two cents here. It's This isn't as concerning as some of the other things that we've raised and that's how I would approach it if I was, uh, you know, an occupant there. And you know, say you had a contract to occupy the building at a certain date and you can't, you should, you should, there should be re reasonable grounds for some compensation for, you know, maybe fair and equitable compensation for, you know, liquidated damages for accommodation maybe you had to assume or some additional storage for your furniture those type of things you can't really it's not punitive you can't it's, it can't be a punishment for them having these unforeseen circumstances but it is reasonable to expect to be you know compensated it's fair it should be fair anyway so back to the article so we'll go here mr miller said miller property corporation was moving forward quickly with the cleanup and with a situation like this, you have to make sure it's completely rebuilt to brand new. So Miller Property Corporation, they're the, they're the guys that are undertaking it. And I mean, these things these things happen, guys, more often than you realize. Um, and it's I'm I'm in some ways I'm glad it's happened now because they're still on there. Imagine just six months down the track, how much of a pain it can be to get people out there. If the builders bug it off, they've got the team somewhere else. It can be a lot more frustrating. I I. A job where we had just the small little defects took a long time to get resolved because the team was already deployed somewhere else so they won't be moving into the lower part of the south tower until we have rectified any of the damage that was occurred and made new again he said the water fell from the ninth floor down to the ground floor not every apartment was affected but certainly it ran through the common area ceilings so there you go that could be every ceiling in the common area it could have it could have fire safety issues. Maybe if it dampened some of the gyproc used in the fire separation systems. I'm not sure what they've done, how it's been constructed in this design. Just something to keep in mind. And, you know, hopefully, hopefully, particularly with all the eyes in the media now about these issues, it'll be addressed. Mr. Miller, Miller a veteran developer who also built the nearby Castle Tavern, King Street Hotel in the 70s said it was an unfortunate incident that could occur on any property development. Yeah, well, yep. You can tell he's, he's obviously got experience and this type of stuff happens on these jobs. And it, in some ways, it's not ha that it happens, it's how they rectify it. It's how they rectify it. So right now, I'm, I'm leaning more towards giving them the benefit of the doubt. I'm extremely happy to see the building finished because the buildings are unbelievable. Oh, you know, that, that could almost come from a Trump line, you know, that's these property developer types, guys. <laughs> but, I mean, just look at this picture. Look how big these towers are in Newcastle. Wow, it's going to change the the uh, appeal of the city and the landscape. So, to have it happen at the very last second is something you never expect, but unex unexpected things do happen. Well, that's, yeah, latent conditions. That's what you have to allow for on every job. Your budget needs to include, I'd say, 10% up, depending on the complexity of it and what it is, but you need to have an allowance for these type of things. And all good project managers and builders do. The two 19-story towers, for, uh, for now, New Castle's tallest building at 66 meters. Uh, 66 meters, not 66 stories, okay. And have made a distinct change to the city's skyline. Yes, they have. They feature 
197 units ranging from studio apartments to five bedroom penthouses. Wow. Wow. The $130 million development was approved in 2016. Construction began a year later with two tower cranes positioned on site for much of the past two years. Work to transform Cottage Creek into a boardwalk canal linking King and Hunter Streets began last month. And let's jump here and we'll have a look at what they're talking, where they're talking about King and what is it? King and Hunter Streets. So we've got King Street here. King Street here, Hunter Street there. Okay, so they're going to build through here, are they? Yeah, well, you'd hope so. That canal looks pretty, pretty crappy, doesn't it? Uh, let's zoom in here and have a look. Good old Newcastle. Yeah, I mean, there's an opportunity there to jazzy that up. So guys, uh, one to keep an eye on. Let's hope it all works out well and we don't hear any other issues. This isn't as, you know, this isn't as shocking as some of the other things we've heard. This is, this is a normal, well, an unfortunate thing that happens on these type of projects and unfortunate timing. Now, at least we're talking about it. So, you know, there's an extra incentive for these contractors to do it right. And I'm sure they will. I'm sure they will. You wouldn't want your brand damaged. You would not because... It's worth everything these days. So guys, let me know what you think. You know, what suggestions would you have for people occupying these buildings? You know, and we'll just keep an eye on it and see what happens. We'll see what happens. Anyway, guys, thank you for joining me for this episode. Please like, share, and subscribe. Ding the bell to see my, well, I try to do twice daily at the moment, but I got to go back and clear a, more, a bit more scrub from the backyard. But I'll see you later tonight. Bye for now.